What is your body's largest organ? Is it your liver? Maybe it's your lungs. Could it be your brain? Well, actually, it's your skin. Not only does it act as a barrier to things getting into your body, but sometimes it can give you a sign that things are going wrong within the body. This video, I will share with you 13 signs that are linked with diabetes. We'll explore why they happen, what to look out for, and I'll give you real life example photographs. And if you're new here, my name is Khalid. I'm a family doctor who works in London. Let's dive straight in. This is called necrobiosis lipoidica, and it's an uncommon inflammatory condition. It usually starts as one or more small red raised patches on both shins. You may also get other patches on other parts of the body, like your hands or your trunk. These lesions grow slowly and may sometimes join up to form larger, flatter, irregular shaped patches, usually with well-defined red borders. They may also have a bit of like a yellowish center and uh, visible blood vessels as well. The condition is most commonly seen in people with diabetes, both type 1 and also type 2. We don't really know the cause, but some theories suggest that it could be damaged to areas that give the skin its strength. So these are your collagen fibers. Okay, on to number two. These dark skin patches are called acanthosis necrocans, and usually they appear on your neck armpits, groin, anywhere where you might have skin folds. The reason why it happens isn't usually clear, but it's thought to be linked with insulin resistance, which is one of the key mechanisms behind why people get diabetes. This is also why it may occur in people who are overweight, obese, but also people who have other metabolic conditions like polycystic ovary syndrome and Cushing syndrome. These tiny red bumps can occur around your ankles, around your hands, your arms, and are called granuloma annular. The rash is not normally painful but it can be slightly itchy it's not contagious and usually gets better on its own within a few months but it's thought that the process behind why it appears is likely due to inflammation and it can be linked to a few conditions including diabetes autoimmune thyroiditis high cholesterol called hyperlipidemia and some very very rare forms of cancer the medical name for this condition is xanthalasma this happens when your body collects extra cholesterol and deposits it around the eyes so you might notice flat or slightly raised yellow growths on or around the eyelids. These deposits are usually harmless but could signal uncontrolled diabetes or high cholesterol. Okay so if you develop a breakout of small reddish yellow bumps across your body this can be a sign of underlying metabolic disease and one of the main causes of this eruption is uncontrolled diabetes. The medical name for it is eruptive xanthomatosis. So what does it look like? Well it's a breakout of these small pimply waxy bumps that can appear on your hands, feet, arms, legs, pretty much anywhere, including your bottom. The eruptions themselves are usually not painful, but in some cases can cause a little bit of an itch. The good news is, again, with most of these things, it's not contagious, so you can't pass it on from one person to another. This condition causes limited joint movement in the hand, and its medical name is diabetic chiroarthropathy. It's quite a mouthful. Or you can just simply call it diabetic hand syndrome. It's characterized by waxy skin that's thickened over the palm aspect of your hand, which reduces the mobility of your hand opening up, especially across the MCP joints and your PIP joints. If you want to test yourself to see if you have this condition, the simple test that we do in clinics is a prayer sign. You basically bring the palm of your hands together like so. Normally, you should be able to bring your hands together and have like full contact. If, however, you have this kind of appearance of your hand, and you're not able to make like full contact with the palm of your hand on both sides, then you've probably got this condition. So if you've got this kind of bending of your um, hand. An alternative test for this is something called the tabletop sign in which you basically will pretend this is a table. You place your hand on a table and it should all be kind of flat. However, if you notice that your hand is slightly kind of raised or hasn't got full contact with the table, again, that's a positive sign. This is a book. Let's call it the book sign. It's not always exclusive to diabetes. You can get it with connective tissue conditions like scleroderma, but also other conditions like Dupuytren's contracture and palmar fasciitis as well. Now, these sores can start with nothing more than a small bump or scrape. And if you have diabetes, then you are at higher risk of developing ulcers. This is why diabetics have yearly foot and leg checks, which assesses the leg for sensation and the development of sores and ulcers. So why are diabetics 
looks more at risk of developing these? Well, there are quite a few different factors on this one. The very first one is that diabetics are more at risk of developing something called diabetic neuropathy. What does that mean? Well, basically, it's damage to your nerves. Imagine you're touching something hot on the hob. Immediate reaction your body would have is to pull your hand away. And that's your nervous system working. If your nervous system isn't working properly like some people who have diabetes, those little pains and pressure points don't cause the same reactions. So your typical pains and pressure points don't really get registered by the brain. So some areas where you've got a sore or a bump or a break in the skin will get bigger because you don't have your natural body response. Diabetics can also have poor circulation and high sugar levels which can slow down the healing process and make them more prone to infections and obviously getting a wound infection is never good it can also delay the amount of time it takes for it to heal and we'll come on to infections in a moment but first these are called skin tags they are super common lots of people have them it doesn't mean you have diabetes if you have them but what we know is that if you are diabetic, you tend to have more skin tags. But what we tend to see is that sometimes you can get them as a result of diabetes. The reason why people get it isn't really clear, but I think it's a number of different factors, including insulin resistance, obesity or being overweight, and also hormonal changes in the body. It's important to mention that most people with skin tags will not have diabetes. And there also may be genetic reasons why some people get more skin tags than other people. This is a common skin condition that affects people with diabetes. These small round or oval shaped patches can typically appear on your lower legs, especially on the shins, and they can be light brown or reddish in color and are slightly indented. Sometimes they have a slightly shiny surface to it too. And again, as you may have guessed, we don't fully know why diabetics develop it, but diabetic dermopathy is thought to be related to damage to the small vessels around that supply the skin. And so poor circulation that changes the structure of your skin may also contribute to the development of these patches. Number 10 is a common complaint even among people who don't have diabetes, but itchy skin can result from dry skin or poor circulation, both of which are more likely when you are diabetic. On to the next one, when you've got diabetes, you have high sugar levels, and this can encourage the growth of fungal infections. Fungi love to hang out in moist folds, as we've talked about before, and that includes your armpits, your groin, under your breast, around your nails, but also in your mouth as well. As we've mentioned before, with high sugar levels, Levels, our immune system doesn't really work as well as it should do, so people often get recurrent infections. So if you're getting lots of thrush infections, either in your tongues or genitals, or if you're getting fungal infections on your skin or feet, then it should be really important to see a doctor to make sure you're tested for diabetes. The treatment often is very simple with antifungal creams, and it should subside after a few weeks. Now, similar to fungal infections, bacterial infections are also more common in diabetics. This raises your risk of skin infections with staphylococcus being the most common one. You may also get other types of infections like cellulitis, which is redness of the skin. It can also be hot to touch. Untreated, it can track up and spread around the body, making you feel unwell, makes you have high temperatures. And again, it's important that if you're getting recurrent bacterial infections like impetigo, like cellulitis, like folliculitis, then it's important to rule out diabetes. And finally, diabetics are also more prone to developing skin blisters. These might pop up suddenly on your fingers, toes, hands, feet, some Sometimes your legs. They can develop there due to friction, or if you've got neuropathy, you may not have felt the irritation on your skin. Other times, and more rarely, it can be a rare sign of long standing diabetes. If you're getting multiple blisters forming all over the body, then it's important to see a doctor and get it investigated. Okay, there you have it. That's been your 13 skin signs that are linked with diabetes. But again, the super important caveat to all of this is if you have one of these, it's not a certainty that it's diabetes. Some can occur on their own, some can be genetic genetic and you could be absolutely fine. Um, some could be actually linked with other conditions, but it's important that if you're getting a few of these or you're concerned you might have diabetes, the most important thing is to get tested. If you want me to go through the most common signs and symptoms of diabetes, then click here to see if you have any of them. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely day and peace out.